Lattice top pies always wow people, though putting them together can require some fancy footwork. Usually, you have to assemble the lattice crust directly on the filling that's already in the pie shell. This means that the clock is ticking and you have a window of time when the dough is pliable but not too soft. And it's tricky to manipulate the lattice strips without getting filling on them. In this episode, I'll show you how to widen that window by making a prefab lattice on parchment that you then flip onto the filled pie. And we'll put this technique into practice in a juicy mixed berry pie. For this lattice top pie, I'm using Rose Levy Berenbaum's cream cheese dough. I love this dough. It's really all about a tender, flavorful crust and not the traditional flaky crust that you expect from a classic American dough. We're going to start with all-purpose flour, a little bit of cake flour, which adds tenderness, a little bit of baking powder, and salt. Now I've chilled this about 30 minutes before I'm going to add it into the food processor. Now we're going to add some cold cream cheese. As you can see, it's in fairly large chunks. And we're going to process this until it forms a fine crumb. This will also lend to tenderness. Just check it. I still see pieces of cream cheese in here, and I want them a little finer. So I'm going to pulse this just a few more seconds before I add the butter. The reason why we want this in a fine crumb is because we really want that fat, the cream cheese, to coat the flour or the protein. It will help prevent gluten from forming once we start adding the liquid. Okay, now we're adding some butter and it's ice cold. Hear it almost clinking into the bowl. And we're going to pulse until the butter is about pea size. This will help give it a little bit of flakiness, as well as wonderful flavor from the butter. OK, perfect. We have some pea-sized pieces of butter, and we're ready to add the liquid. One of the ways Rose's recipe for cream cheese dough differs from my American pie is that instead of adding water, she adds heavy cream. This adds just another layer of richness and flavor to a delicious dough. And I'm also going to add a little bit of vinegar. This will help cut the gluten and prevent it from getting too tough. And now I'm going to pulse in short bursts until the dough just starts to come together. It'll take about a minute. The dough will look crumbly. When you squeeze it gently, it will hold together. Now. We're going to dump this dough out onto a piece of plastic wrap. We're going to gather the crumbs together. I like to use the plastic wrap because I don't want to melt the butter. Okay, now the dough is almost completely together. We're going to divide it in half. That looks about right. With a second piece of plastic wrap, we're going to shape one half into a round disc. This will be for our bottom crust. Lovely. Wrap that up. And this second half will shape into a rectangle for our lattice. We'll refrigerate the dough until it's well chilled. It'll take about 45 minutes and then we'll roll it out. I've already rolled out my bottom crust and fitted it into my pie plate. It's in the fridge chilling while I make the prefab lattice top. I've rolled the second piece of dough into a rectangle and I'm going to trim it so it is exactly 14 by 9. As you can see, I'm using my trusty ruler. Do the same thing on the other side. Peel away the excess. Now I'm going to cut my rectangle into 12 strips three quarters of an inch wide. Marking the dough so I make sure that the strips are even. If you don't do even strips, you'll have kind of a haphazard looking top once it's finished and baked. Now I'm just going to mark the other side so we can get a clean slice across the pastry. There we go. Okay, now we're ready to cut. 
line my ruler up, pastry wheel, and whiz it across. If you want to just use your paring knife or even a pizza wheel, that's fine too. As you can see, I'm sliding the ruler down after each swipe to do the next strip. To make the prefab crust, I like to use a large piece of parchment, about this size. So it's as easy as transferring our strips and positioning six of them about three quarters of an inch apart. You want to try and line them up as much as possible, but we're really just getting them into position now. Later on, we'll fuss with them and make sure that it's just the right spacing. Also, one of the nice things about doing this on parchment paper is that you can stop at any time. You can just slide a cookie sheet under this, cover it with some plastic, and throw it into the fridge until you have time. Okay, now we're just gonna scooch these up together so they're just approximately three quarters of an inch apart. Now we're going to peel back alternating strips, and slide in your first cross piece, set this first strip slightly off center, and put those pieces back together and pull back the opposite alternating strips. In goes another one. And we're gonna position this strip, again, about three quarters of an inch apart, and our strips go back over. As you can see, the dough is really pliable, really easy to work with. And now, one last one on this side, and I'm gonna use this one that's a little bit thinner, a little bit more ragged, because it is the edge. We'll make up the edge of our crust, top crust, so we won't see it as much. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the other side. We're gonna fold over opposite sides, just over our first strip that we laid down, and we're gonna lay in another one of our better pieces so that the lattice topping has its best face forward. Okay, now we have some time to monkey around with the pieces. Make sure we like our positioning. As you can see, I can still move the dough. No need to be perfect, but it is nice since you have the time to adjust accordingly. Okay, and now to make the prefab crust really easy to work with, I'm gonna take small dabs of water, just using my fingertip, and pop it underneath the dough and press it lightly onto the other piece. It's just a teeny bit of water, but that will seal it and set it so that when we go to transfer our crust, it won't move. It's not essential that you get all of the strips moistened, but it is important to get the outside edges and as many of the interior ones as possible. Better safe than sorry. The berry fruit filling is simply a combination of four cups of mixed berries. I have blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. We're gonna add some granulated sugar. You want to add between a half a cup and a cup, depending on the sweetness of your berries. We'll add a little all-purpose flour as our thickener, a pinch of salt, there we go, a little bit of freshly ground nutmeg, and a little fresh lemon juice. Bring out the flavor of the berries. Toss together, and go gently on the tossing here, you don't want to crush your berries. And just toss until the fruit is evenly coated with the flour and the sugar. And one last step, I'm gonna taste a blueberry to check for the sweetness. Good, but I think I will add just a little bit more sugar. A Couple of final tosses. Now I'm gonna pile the berries into our lined pie shell. Just gonna spoon the berries in. And any remaining sugar or juices that might be in the bowl. We're gonna spread this around. Okay, let's top this pie with the lattice. Got our lattice out of the fridge, right here. I'm gonna take the plastic wrap off, and then I'm gonna slide my hand underneath, positioning the palm of my hand right in the center of the lattice. You want to imagine, when you're lifting this up, that you are actually gonna put your palm right onto the center of the fruit filling. This lattice is not going any place. It's all still perfectly in position. So now comes the leap of faith. Trust me, it will work. 
You simply, again, imagine the palm of your hand going onto the center of the fruit filling. Ready? One, two, three. And then you delicately peel that off. Like with other double crust pies, we're going to trim off to about a half an inch of dough from the edge. There you go. And now we're going to roll the lattice and the bottom crust together and let it sit right on the top of the rim. You can press the lattice to the bottom crust as you're rolling. Okay, we're just going to do a simple crimp. Index finger and thumb and the opposite index finger gently push the two together. Remember, it's important to keep the crimping on top of the edge. And there you have it. A beautiful, professional looking lattice crust with no messy juices on top. Looks like it came right out of a pastry shop in Paris. We're going to cover with plastic and we're going to pop it in the refrigerator to chill until firm. It'll take about an hour before we're going to bake. Now that the pie has chilled, I'm going to brush the lattice with a little bit of whole milk. And then I'm going to sprinkle a little turbinado sugar over the top. It'll give it a nice sparkle. Don't worry if some goes into the filling. Now it's time to bake the pie. We'll put it in the 425 degree oven directly on the baking sheet. And we'll cook the pie until the filling is nice and bubbly and thick. After 15 minutes, cover the room with the pie shield or foil strips. Let the pie cool until the juices have thickened.